Good morning and welcome. We are receiving communion in both kinds. You're welcome to take the cup and guide it to your base. And please, in receiving the bread, put out your hands. You will receive the bread. We, we are discouraging intinction unless you are immunocompromised, in which case the Eucharistic minister will intinct for you and put it back in your hand for you to consume. All are welcome. We're so glad you're here. All are welcome to come to receive. If you choose not to receive communion, and all, all may, all may receive. Come be with us at the table, at God's table, and share a prayer. Let's have a prayer even as we begin our worship. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gather us, O Holy One, from ways we have wandered this week. Gather us that we may now come before you with our hearts and hands and voices to receive your blessings and to give you praise in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And saying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Son Jesus Christ came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, <clears throat> who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First lesson is a reading from Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the sorry, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you should do. And you shall anoint for me the one who I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I 
because I have rejected him for the Lord, does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for he will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ready, and he had beautiful eyes, and he was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and in the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Hear what the Spirit is saying. We will be saying the 23rd Psalm in unison this morning. Please join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not die. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord and take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud in my eyes. Then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then now does he see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? The Gospel of the Lord. Hmm. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight. Help us to see through the eyes of kindness. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Let's take a moment to quiet ourselves. Let's allow our souls to catch up with our bodies. This season invites us to make room for Lent, to pause in our daily lives. Robin Wall Kimmerer reminds us, a teacher comes, they say, when you are ready. And if you know its presence, it will, if you ignore its presence, it will speak to you more loudly. But you have to be quiet 
to listen. Our readings today are loaded with memory, meaning and memory. Thank you all of you who have read to us so carefully. From 1 Samuel, we heard that the Lord looks upon the heart, not on appearance. Then the lovely 23rd Psalm, assuring us of the Lord's tender care and protection. Ephesians echoes the theme of darkness and light, reminding us that we are children of the light. <sighs> then we came to the reading from the Gospel of John. It's interesting that our reading only goes through verse 27. In the lectionary I looked up, it turns out I worked with the Roman Catholic reading it continues through verse 41, the longest lectionary reading in the whole lectionary. So that's what I prepared my sermon for. Then I picked up the bulletin Friday and I realized we are only reading part of what I went with. Do you ever make mistakes like that? Not really paying attention? We only have snippets of a reading, and it's so much richer to read the befores and afters to get the whole context. So I'm going to tell you the spoiler, which comes in the next few verses. You can read them yourselves when you get home. The healed man is kicked out of the synagogue after a prickly exchange with the Pharisees. Jesus hears about it and goes to him. In that encounter, the previously blind man gains what might be called his spiritual vision, not physical vision, spiritual vision, heart-centered. He recognizes Jesus as the Son of Man, from God, incarnate, and he believes from a life in darkness to a life in the light in more ways than physical. As the Lenten season progresses, Jesus is confronted by escalating pushback from the powers that be. Things are only going to get worse. We all know what's coming. Holy Week, then Good Friday, we also know ahead of time the joy of Easter. But now let's take time to consider and be with the story of Jesus healing the blind man and the pushback from the Pharisees. Several themes showed up for me. Darkness versus light. Blindness versus vision. The premise understood then the physical limitations are the result of sin. People asked, who sinned? The parents of the blind man? The blind man himself. Jesus refutes that whole idea. They also asked, was this man who can now see even really blind from birth? How could somebody heal him? Blame, doubt, questions. How human, huh? As the story unfolds, the blind man who gained his physical sight is questioned again and again. In the Gospels, the one thing we are assured of every time is that when Jesus shows up, everything changes. Miracles happen. Divisions and differences are set aside in the presence of Jesus. The contrast between those who recognize Jesus as the light and those who increasingly condemn him is clear. In this story today, as in others, the Pharisees just don't get it. They are spiritually blind. 
does this mean for me, for us? Blindness versus sight. Darkness versus light. Where are my blind spots? Do I even recognize and try to pay attention to them? How might I respond differently? Where are the dark places in my life? How do I respond to them? What about the light? Do I pay attention to the gifts of grace that show up? Do I celebrate with joy? Jesus wants us to have life, full and rich and abundant, the kind of life that stems from knowing that we have infinite worth in God's eyes, and we are and always will be God's beloved child. Jesus asks us, follow me. I, th I think that means practicing loving kindness, allowing the divine presence to bring out our best self, showing up. Practice means being intentional with our actions and words. Fortunately, it doesn't mean being perfect. It means keep on practicing. Kindness practice means being kind and compassionate with ourselves as much as it means being kind and compassionate with others. Showing up as our best selves is powerful. Don't ever underestimate what your presence means to another person. Father Dan gave us some examples last week. He encouraged us to think of times when someone showed up for us just when we needed it. These are challenging times. Let's practice listening with patience, kindness, responding with compassion, asking honest questions, using language with ourselves and others that is kind and soul-affirming, keeping our hearts open and attentive. I'll close with a Lenten practice attributed to Pope Francis. Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with love. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressure and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent as you listen. Amen. Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. God has consecrated us in baptism's gracious waters to be a holy people, that we may be ever anointed with gladness. Let us turn to our God in prayer, saying, God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. We pray for the church, for an end to division and indignation, for all the people washed and sent by Christ, and for a renewal of God's fulfilling spirit. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. We pray for all who beg for life, for all baptismal candidates awaiting the pool of grace, and for hearts of devout faith. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. We pray for all who are called to govern in justice and peace, for an end to all works of darkness, for all the peoples created in God's image, and for a spirit of wisdom and mercy to rule the mighty. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. We pray for all condemned to die, for all victims of illegal arrest and oppression, for all who are tortured, for their families, and for all who work for liberation. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. We pray for the forgotten and abandoned, for all who are in anguish, for the guilt-ridden, for all in need of the Spirit, for the sick, the grieving, and the dying, that they may be uplifted. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. For all brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, spouses, partners and families, friends and companions, that there may be love and mutual reverence. God of all gladness, have mercy upon us. And we pray together. We pray for our church as we discern together your loving invitation and divine vision for our future. May we listen to each other, to your spirit, and to our own hearts in order to become a clearer light and welcoming host to all who might journey our way. We pray for Gail, our senior warden, Melissa, our junior warden, our interim rector, Father Dan, and the entire church staff. We pray for the members of the vestry and all those volunteering their time on the profile committee. May we embrace our differences, our unique gifts, and our deep need for each other, weaving our stories together in a tapestry of love that welcomes all who enter here. God of our hope, for all the children of light who have gone before us and now stand in your radiant countenance. Give us the light of Christ that we may leap up in our darkness and rise from death at the last into the life of gladness in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. 
Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I'm going to work in one announcement here before the others, which is to say, if you want to know what's going on at Good Samaritan, go to our website. I'm not a really big website person, but I went to the website and was quite impressed. <laughs> and you can find a, a great many ways to find your way into greater life here. Uh, our website is well kept up and very informative. And now, for others. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Today is Laetare Sunday, uh, Latin often translated to Rejoice Sunday. It's a time when traditionally the altar pyramids are changed to rose-colored or pink. Uh, that's why we have some uh, pink flowers behind the high altar today. Uh, it's a softening of the Lenten season. And so it seems appropriate today to tell you about a celebration that's coming up, a time for rejoicing. And no, I'm not talking about Easter. Uh, I'm talking about the week after Easter, when we celebrate uh, with great festivity the completion of our pipe organ after 60 years. Uh, it'll be a big day at the church uh, at 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, Sundays at 3, at 4 o'clock, we'll present a wonderful organ recitalist uh, coming all the way from New York, uh, originally hailing from the UK, having served in English cathedrals, now living in, uh, in New York, uh, is going to play our dedication recital. Again, this is uh, at 4 o'clock the week after Easter on April 16th. Immediately following the recital, we'll have a celebratory dinner uh, catered here in Simpson Hall by Forks and Corks, which if you've had their food before, it's really good. Uh, and we will require tickets for the dinner. The concert is free as always, and you're all encouraged to come and hear this incredible world-class artist here in Corvallis. But the dinner afterwards will require tickets. They're $25 a person, and they must be reserved by April 2nd. That's two weeks from today. So if you're interested in joining us to celebrate uh, the completion of our organ after 60 years, projects that have been going on since this building was first built, uh, do join us to celebrate, and you can talk to me to reserve a ticket, call the office during business hours, or send me an email uh, with your name and number of guests that you'd like to uh, join. Finally, uh, you'll notice our bell choir in the back, another symbol in my mind of rejoicing. What a more, uh, uh, there's no more joyful sound, I think, than the bell choir. And they could use a couple more people, particularly mm -hmm. folks that have... Uh, good upper body strength. Some of those low bass bells, if you, if you look on the, the right hand side in the back, they're pretty big, they're pretty heavy. Uh, and we've got all these very petite and, and lovely women back there lifting these big heavy bells. So uh, if you've got some good arm strength, consider joining the bell choir. It's a riot, it is so much fun. Uh, I have to tell you, it's so much fun. And uh, you can talk to Stephanie Woolwind or, or any of the members back there and they'll tell you just how fun it is. Do consider joining them. Uh, <laughs> said they've got little ones too. <laughs> well, we, Zachary did not mention Compline this evening, which is an ongoing gift at 8 o'clock. 
I want to report that the wine appreciation event last week raised about $700 for campus ministry. Woohoo! Uh, and we limited it to 20 people. There are about five people that were on a waiting list for the next one, which I can say is going to be on Friday evening, March 31st. So there's already five signed up. If you went to the first one, you're welcome to sign up on the uh, I'll hold you on a waiting list until maybe five days before the event, and then if we haven't filled up, I'll add you to that. Um, I think because that's a Friday, uh, March 31st, we'll probably start maybe 5 or 5.30. That's going to be a fundraiser to support the development of the Children's Choir Program, which Zachary is going to be starting next fall. Um, you can see me in the parish hall afterwards. I'll also have an announcement in Wednesday's uh, uh, email newsletter with my email address so you can uh, sign up by email, but I'll I'll sign you up uh, uh, by uh, uh, In person in the, in the parish hall afterwards uh, Just a quick note I if you ordered Girl Scout uh, cookies, I'll have them in Simpson Hall after the service And finally, this week on Wednesday, we at Good Samaritan Church are hosting the midweek soup dinner and prayer service. It's ecumenical, so we've invited other churches to join us. I hope that you all come and participate. You don't need to bring anything. We have people making soups. We're making a big pot of soup in the kitchen. It's going to be very delicious soup. And we'll start at 6 o'clock in Simpson Hall and then move into the church at 7 o'clock for an evening of prayer led by uh, Father Dan and Zachary with some piano music. And it'll be a wonderful evening, so I hope you'll come. You'll find two inserts with your bulletins. Take a look at those on your own. Thank you. Bring offerings, give thanks, and come into the Lord's courts with praise.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us the fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross. He triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the blessing of God our Creator, Christ our brother born of our sister Mary, and the Holy Spirit who lives and moves through all things be with you now and always. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.